All right, what's up, my friends? I know it was a long multi-court section. You missed it. Go watch it on YouTube, of course. And uh, we're here, full set review, about to finish up. Call us and lands. You missed anything. White, blue, black, red, green, multicolor. It's all on YouTube. Watch it on YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit the buttons. Let me know your thoughts. Follow on stream. Complete set review. Limited, constructed. You name it. We got it. Let's finish strong here. First up is the arc reactor. Uh, arc splitter. One mana equipment. Equips for one. Equip creature has one. This creature does one damage. Target creature is blocking it. Um, this card's pretty bad. This card's pretty bad. You know, this is like sort of a pseudo unblockable thing unless your opponent doesn't care and they just want to block and make it spend a bunch of mana. So overall, I think this card is pretty bad. You know, say I have a, a four forward play and you have a two two, right? And you want to push it through. I just take two unless I have to block, which is I block and it costs you four mana to kill my thing, you know? So overall, I think this card's kind of eh. Um, it is cool on Death Touchers, that is true, but again, you just don't block. So, the kind of card where it has a lot of words on it, but the words are basically, don't block this. Da -da 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 -da. So, if your limited deck needs a way to push through, this can do it, but not thrilled. Constructed, absolutely not. Up next is Brass Knuckles. Um, just adorable card here. Format equipment, when you play it, copy it, because you got two hands, obviously. And, uh, Crypt Creature has Double Strike as long as you control two or more equipments that are attached to it. Attach for one. So, basically, this is four mana equipped to give Double Strike. There isn't really any benefit to having equipment or artifacts in play in this set. So, like, you're not gaining value of, like, having multiple equipments in play. And it's just very, very expensive and clunky. I don't know, like, it's it's kind of cute and funny. Uh, if you're playing other equipments and you can, like, maybe utilize it in that way, sure. Uh, but for the most part, it's just kind of cute but not very good. I don't know. It's very, very clunky. Very, very clunky. Cement Shoes, speaking of clunky, Cement Shoes, one man equipment. Crypt Creature gets plus two, plus three, plus three, to, to, uh, I'm sorry. I'll rephrase. A quick creature gets plus three, plus three. And has, beneath your end step, tap this creature. And then it doesn't untap. Uh, so, huge drawbacks here. And there isn't really a great way to work around it. So, you play it, you equip it, you attack. Cool. Now it doesn't untap. And you can't, like, move it or whatever. And, like, kind of break, like, break it like that. Then the next turn, you can move it to something else, and then that thing can attack. So it can definitely push through some damage for sure. Uh, if you are stalled out, if you have... Uh, yeah, the flavor kind of sucks here, honestly. Uh, but, you know, Vigilance can't save you. There's no real way to work around it other than, like, I'm going to attack with a big creature every other turn, or every turn. I want to attack with one of my big creatures every other turn while losing the other one. Um, but... That's only if you're desperate for a way to push through. So, all in all, not super great. Bad flavor. Card's a miss. I don't like this card. Screw this card. I should have a screw this card reward. Chrome Cat, 3, three mana, 3, 2. ETB Scry 1. This is your your average limited filler card. Just a filler card. A getaway car. Sleeper car. Anyone? Super obscure reference. Uh, getaway car is pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Two mana for a vehicle. It's a 4-3 with haste. So, it hits. This thing bangs. Um, and whenever it's actor, actor blocks, return up to one tower creature that created this turn to its owner's hand. So, if I play a Blight Beetle and I crew it, attack for four, which is pretty good, bounce the beetle, do it again next turn, spirit of companion, etc. So, the rate here is pretty good because a 4-3 haste over 3 is super solid. And then we can just be bouncing value cards, which is also cool because crew 1. If this is crew 2, it's totally unplayable. Uh, but at crew 1, this card's pretty cool. This card's pretty sweet. I like it a lot. Um, hits pretty hard. Good synergy. Good, uh, good, um, good stuff. Card's cool. I like it a lot. Constructed, I think maybe. 
I think maybe. And then uh, in in limited, absolutely. This card's great in limited for sure. Definitely make this card work. Uh, I like it a lot. I think it's fun. I'm definitely going to build, a, build a, a getaway card deck for sure. Cool card. Cool card. Up next is Guided Pinions. Two mana equipment. ED, ETB make a treasure. Equip for two. Gives flying. Really, really, really clunky. Uh, really, really clunky. If your deck is desperate for a way to break through, sure. If you're desperate for a treasure, sure. But this card's bad. This card's very, very clunky and very, very expensive. Uh, I'm not happy if this card's in my draft deck. Halo Scarab, 2 for a 2-1. Pay 2, exile up your graveyard, make a treasure. Card's fine. Card's fine. Not a bad 2-drop. If you're utilizing the treasure to splash, sure. If you're utilizing the treasure for, like, an actual good value effect, sure. Pretty cool. Uh, but it could do worse. I'm not throwing this card in my deck all the time, but it's, it's good. It's cool. Drug Bug. I like it. The Drug Bug. Halo Scarab. Then we come to... Luxior Gieta's Gift. It's a trap. What the hell's going on with this card? One man equipment. Legendary. A quick creature gets plus almost one for each counter on it. Okay. Equip permanent isn't a planeswalker. Oh, I'm sorry. I, misread, I should misread, misread this card. Uh, sure. We'll keep going, though. Equip permanent is the, is, isn't a planeswalker. And it's creature... I'm sorry. It's a long set review, folks. Give me a second. Give me a second. A crypt permanent isn't a planeswalker and is a creature in addition to its other types. Loyalty abilities can st still be activated. I misread it as can't. I apologize. But I still think it's pretty bad. A crypt planeswalker, one. A crypt anything else, three. So... For two mana, you can make your Planeswalker into a 4-4 four, four, or whatever. Uh, which makes it much easier to kill, obviously, too. Why would you ever want to do that? Uh, is the question. You know, I, I don't really understand. I don't really understand. Um, this does work with Devoted Druid, I suppose, right? Yeah, that's pretty annoying. That's pretty annoying. Uh, so, like, that's not a factor in my evaluation here. But, like, playing this card fairly or straight up, why would you ever want to do this? You know, like, I don't really understand. Uh, so they can't attack the Planeswalker? I, I mean, but then they just kill it. I don't I don't know. You know, like, why? I, why? What? What? I don't see the benefit this card is giving you. You already have a Planeswalker in play. That's great. That's great. Uh, so, yeah. I think this card's pretty bad. Um, it does some really weird stuff. But overall, I don't know. A lot of pop and circumstance. Maybe maybe a cool uh, combo or two here or there, but all in all, uh, I I don't know why I'm making my hard to kill Planeswalker into a creature. I just I'm not getting it. That's a trap card for limited. Uh, very very doubtfully. That's just terrible. It's just terrible. Moving on. Ominous parcel. All mana for an artifact. Pay two. Find a basic land. Pay five. Deal four to a creature. Card's kind of cool, honestly. Um, mana fixer. It has value later also. The fear of a card like this is you draw it late. It doesn't do anything. So late on, just, it's just, you can kill a creature. Early on, it manifests your mana. Solid card. Solid draft card. I like it. I like it. Paragon of modern... Modern... Whatever. Modern stuff. Four mana four, a 2-2 two, two flyer. Pay three. It gets plus plus one to end of turn. If exactly three hours of mana were spent to activate this ability, put a counter on it instead. This card is the kind of card where if your deck needs a way to win, this can do it for you, for sure. But it is very clunky and very shitty. Um, very shitty. Um, super clunky. Not a card you ever want in your deck, basically. Simple as that. Simple as that. Quick Draw, quick draw Dagger is pretty cool. The meta for an equipment, uh, it's got Flash. When it ETBs, creature gets first strike, plus almost one, and then it equips for only one. This card's not bad. If you're playing an aggressive deck, you attack with this, they block, you play this, and then win the combat step, and then still have the equip in play. That's cool. That's great. I mean, any equipment that equips for one, I guess plus plus one, is not bad. It's easy to move around and can help you help you size up a little bit. Uh, but card's cool. Good limited trick. Not amazing. Not an insanely good card, but I think this card's very reasonable if you're aggressive. 
Very reasonable. Yeah, and then if you want, and there also are like some cheap life linkers and double strikers stuff like that, which makes this card even better for sure. So I'm a big fan of combat tricks that leave material behind, and this does that. So like it a lot. Like it a lot. Scuttling Butler. Speaking of a uh, double strike, Scuttling Butler is a four one for three. Beginning combat, your turn. So you control two or more multicolored permanents against double strike. This card's like actually good. Like, right? Like, it's not that hard to have two multi-card permits in play. And a 4-1 double striker is a very serious threat. And then the fail state here of a 4-1 for 3 really isn't that bad. Um, you can block and trade up. Uh, this card is just, like, actively good. Like, actively good. Um, good limited card. Good limited card. Obviously, you need to have enough multi-card permanence. But, um... If you're activating this, it's insane. And if you're not, it still blocks and trades okay. For sure. So, cool card. Reprint. Suspicious Bookcase. Two minutes for an 4 Defender. Creature can't block this turn. Um, if you're destined for a defender and then destined for a way to win, sure. But this is a card you should not be happy to play. Unlicensed Hearse. Two minutes for a vehicle. Definitely a possible constructed card here. Tap to exile two cards from single graveyard. And its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards that were exiled with it. Crew 2. Uh, so, kind of like a graveyard hate kind of vehicle. I don't know if this is better than just, like, playing a relic. Or playing, like, some other, like, actively good graveyard hate card. But it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that it, uh, it sizes up as the game goes on. Uh, you can crew it, attack with it. Kind of a cool card. It's kind of a cool card. Weird one. It's a weird one. But, uh, it's cool. You can also, I guess, hit your own graveyard, too. But... Uh, Lion Sash versus this. They're similar. Um, one's not on equipment, obviously, but not best in show? No. It's just a, like, I, the problem is that, like, when you're playing a graveyard hate card like this, it's not really good at hating the graveyard. You know, it's a little slow. It costs two. You know, whereas if you're bringing in a graveyard hate card, you usually want that card just bomb the graveyard rest in peace lay one of the, vo of, of the void you know relic you can't afford to have your graveyard hate card be like a half measure so um i i, I think this card's fine but eh, it's all right it's all right moving on to our lands and of course the lands are very simple there are 15 of them but there are basically three of them and first up is the common fixing lands, which are your bomb and commons. Uh, these lands are really, really good. These lands are really, really good. Five common lands, one for each house. When it ETBs, sacrifice it immediately. When you do, search for a forest, plains, or island, put it on the battlefield tapped, and then gain one life. So these are just excellent. They're phenomenal mana fixing, a little bit of life for your trouble, uh, facilitate splashes, uh, just evolving wilds with a bit of upside. Obviously, you can't get any land, but if you're the colors that you are, these are great. Uh, this is, you know, it's not a try land exactly as far as like actually tapping for all the colors, but really, really good. It's good for the delirium effect, absolutely. It gains a life, which is great. Uh, card's great. I think these are really, really awesome. Like, great mana fixers uh, at common. Of course, one, one for each. Uh, one for each house, Cabaretti Courtyard, Maestro's Theater, Obscura Storefront, and then the River Tears Overlook. All the exact same cards for each uh, for each uh, each guild. Then we come to the Triomes. The the Triomes. Best in show, not close. Um, these cards, of course, obviously Triomes see play in every format and most formats. Um, they're annoying in modern because of the fetch lands. I personally don't like that the fetch lands can get such a wide array of colors. Uh, but I think these are really, really fun in non fetch land formats. They're going to see an unbelievable amount of play in standard, pioneer, historic, and so on and so forth. Uh, they are very, very good. There are obviously one for each guild. Not much to say. Y'all know what Triome does. They're good. Tri Cycle lands, sure. You get the idea. You get the idea. So there's one for each color. Yada, yada, yada. Easy game. Best in show. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. And our last land cycle here is an allied cycle. 
of plazas. Sort of like pseudo-completing the campus cycle from Strixhaven. Uh, common tap lands. But while the campuses you were able to pay for and scry, these allow you to pay for and sack to draw a card. And that's like really, really good. Um, these are, yeah, we have a Rise of the Canopy at home, for sure. Um, but for common mana fixers, common tap lands are already almost good enough anyway. So the ability to, uh, to cash these things in for a card is, is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, these are great. These are all really, really good. Uh, definitely super solid picks and limited. And uh, I think that playing three colors or more is definitely going to be a thing in this format for sure. The cards are great. Got to catch Train. Tram, sorry. Tram. And, uh, yeah, they're it. So, to recap, best in show, the Triomes, pretty easy. Uh, our trap card is the, uh, the Luxor over here. Our sleeper card is the getaway car. And our bomb in common is the hide, the, uh, the sacrifice the lands. I don't know what these are called, honestly. And that is it. That is the entire set review. I can go to bed now. I love you all. Thank you all so much for watching. New set. I'm pumped. We have a little bit of a, of a lull here, actually. So the set does not come out tomorrow or whatever. They're going to do uh, a two-week break, actually. So pre-release is next weekend. And then it won't actually release on Arena until two weeks from now. So two weeks from now, uh, Thursday the uh, Thursday the 28th will be 10 new brews, which is my, of course, uh, 10 new brews. I build new decks. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. And then the day after that, we'll start our Bronze Mythic series as well. I want to start Bronze Mythic early this time. Get right in the queues. We'll be drafting them whenever else is drafting them for the first time as well. So it's going to be awesome. Follow the stream. Follow me on everything. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on YouTube. Let me know what you want to see. You're all great. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And YouTube folks, love you. Like, comment, subscribe. You're all great.